This is the very first church in Ottawa. Going inside the oldest church in Ottawa. Inside Ottawa. Or you come here and we give you a ride around the market and past the parliament or down Sussex and back on the Minto Bridge. Really? That's kind of our tour. Cool. Our first building on the tour today is directly behind you guys. This is the Byward Market Heritage Hall. It was built in 1926, but it's not actually the first market hall we've had. It is the fifth. The very first one was built in the 1820s, all the way down George Street in the intersection just up there. Eventually, we built up a second, a third, and a fourth. We lost many to fire over the years before our fire department worked as well as modern ones do. Um, our, our building holds the record for longevity at this moment at 98 years young beating out its predecessor, the Third Market, by about four years at this point. We hope that this tour, as we look back on the past 200 years of history, we will be able to look forward to the next 200, 300, and 400 of the Byward Market. The next stop, easy for you guys, we're not moving yet, is just behind me here. So this is the Grand Pizzeria today, but it was actually built in 1877 as one of the first grocery stores in the area. The grocer would have lived on the second and third fourth floors, whereas the actual store would have been accessible on the ground. It very quickly changed hands to a new owner and became the Grand Central Hotel, the namesake of today's restaurant. Grand Central was super important because it was right in the middle of the action in Bytown, later Ottawa. This was the main spot for people to come and see. We weren't a big city yet. Pretty much we extended as far as Bank Street that way and as far as the Rideau River in that direction. This was the middle of the action. All right, we're gonna get started now uh, on the walking part. Do not hesitate to tell me to slow down. Do not hesitate to ask questions and don't hesitate to tell me to speak up. Let's get going. And the trip gives me a smile Cause he knows that it's me He didn't come to see The boy did of my life We are resting here for a Now, who here has been to, skated on, seen our gorgeous Rideau Canal? Majority of us, yeah. awesome. Would you believe me if I told you you are standing on top of one of the parts of the canal? Oh no. So right now, they're actually, right where we're standing, pardon me, there used to be a second chunk of the canal, which was known as the bywash. This was the overflow. When the canal filled up too much with water because of heavy boats and heavy cargo, the water needed somewhere to go. Lower Town, this neighborhood, also used to be a swamp before the arrival of settlers. So they had to drain consistent water out of the area to make it dry land for building. The bywash uh, allowed this to happen. Started around where the National Art Center is today at the canal. Came up underneath where the Rideau Center and Hudson's Bay are. Down this street up to York Street and then down King Edward where it later flowed out into the Rideau River. This was not just a uh, extra waterway, however. Many people in the neighborhood use this for cargo and goods on small boats to get them to their houses, things that they couldn't carry walk-in or their horses couldn't haul. People did their laundry in the bywash. Some people chose to swim in the bywash. And there was even a mill on York Street that was uh, able to be powered by the strength of its water. The issue being is that it was also the first sewer in Ottawa. So a lot of household waste ended up in the bywash to be outflowed into the river before we had the infrastructure we do today. By the 1890s, the city government realized it's not quite healthy to have an open air sewer floating through the middle of downtown. So they decided to cover it up. It's still technically a part of our modern day sewer system today. It's been refurbished and rebuilt along some parts of it to meet our needs but it is still underneath us. If you were here for the 2019 uh, sinkhole collapse on Rideau Street, that was roughly on top of where the bywash also sits underground. So it was a mix of that and the new O-Train tunnels that caused the ground to collapse over there. Oh. Oh. All right, so this was built in 1863. It originally served as a hotel, two different hotels actually in its early years. It then became a military barracks. We still had active military in Ottawa. 
when we were by town, this was strictly a military town in order to build the canal. The military resided here for a few years and it passed hands again to the federal government. This building is known for being the first site of the Geologic Survey of Canada. Our Geologic Survey does a lot of important research of our natural resources and our land use so that we can keep up with the rich natural history of our country. They very quickly outgrew this building and moved to a much larger office building down in the government section of town. However, uh, it was also falling into disrepair. By the 1950s, it was slated for demolition by the city and the Ontario government. Thankfully, that very same decade, the National Capital Commission was formed for the preservation and protection of built heritage in our communities. They bought this building, redid the inside, and today they make sure to uh, manage and protect it so it can continue to grace our streets for years and years to come. Now it's only offices, uh, some small offices and restaurants, but you can even head inside through the diners to see what it looked like in its now resurrected state. Oh, I, we have a bit of a big group, so I'm actually going to do a double whammy of the next one. It's a little bit tight on the sidewalk on Sussex there. So, this is the most recent story I have for you guys today. How many of we us were around in Ottawa for the 60s and 70s, or liked the music from that time? <laughs> there we go. The music, but the I music. wasn't here. There we go. So just around the corner at 521, I'll point it out as we actually get in front of it, um, was Café L'Ivo, or the Owl in English. It was started by two University of Ottawa students in 1960, and it was open for 15 years. This was where some of the legends of rock and roll in their day got their international career started. It was a jumping off point to be discovered even further. Some names that played there include Joni Mitchell, Neil Young, Five Man Electrical Band, Van Morrison, Bruce Cockburn, Leonard Cohen, and Gordon Lightfoot. Jimi Hendrix frequented there to go watch performers, although he never performed himself. Pierre Trudeau was also known to frequent it to see some of the great artists that were playing there. I know. Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah. All right. Stick with me for a second, guys. Imagine you are completely quenched, you're super thirsty. Where do you go? The buy one. The buy. <laughs> Normally today, that would be your tap or your Brita filter or your fridge, what have you. Stuff we take for granted. Back in the day, before we actually had public drinking, or pardon me, in, indoor drinking fountains, the only way you could get your drinking water was from public wells. This marks the site, uh, actually one block away, of one of the early public wells in Ottawa. These are important for the community, as many members could arrive at the same time, and you could hang out with your neighbors when you're getting a drink. This one had a chain attached to a cup, so you couldn't take the cup away for humans to drink out of as well as the trough for the horses to drink water out of. If you take a look at here, you can see what the original look of the well was before they took it down. So I ended up buying the backyards. This used to be back alleyways for horses and cold storage, and the NCC wanted to preserve that history by making these beautiful public spaces for people to visit. This one is called the Jean d'Arc Courtyard in honor of the Jean d'Arc Institute that stood here from 18, or 1917 to 1980. It was a boarding house for young working women to be able to live while they were starting their careers. Notre Dame Cathedral. They started construction on this in 1841, very early in our city's history, but it wasn't completed until 1885. It took over 40 years to do the intricate stone and woodwork involved here. It's a bit of a mixed pot of architecture. The majority of the exterior and interior is neo-Gothic or Gothic Revival. Think of those very striking medieval buildings in Paris or in London. Whereas some of the outside detailing, such as the doors and windows, is a neoclassical style. That's more Greek and more Roman architecture there. This is the very first church in Ottawa. Before this one was standing, there was a small wooden structure on the same site in the 1820s and 1830s. Today, you can still head inside 
when there's not a wedding to visit. Let's go inside, guys. Let's go inside. Let's go inside. Okay, we're going inside right now. We're going inside the oldest church in Ottawa. gorgeous brick building, stone building, pardon me, is known as the Vallad House. I'm going to test you on a bit of your Canadian history here, so get ready. This was built in 1866. It is slightly newer than its neighbor, but it is still very, very important on the heritage scale. The original owner was Dr. Francois Xavier Vallad. He was a doctor and ran his medical practice out of the first floor. This man was important because he was called to Regina by Sir John A. Macdonald, our first Prime Minister, to examine Louis Riel after his trial. Is that name ringing a bell for yes. anyone here? So, so, Louis Riel was the leader of the Métis in the Red River rebellions in Manitoba. When Manitoba was being brought into Confederation, the Métis people and Louis Riel believed they did not have enough of a say on the rules to enter Confederation, so they chose to start up these rebellions. To the Canadian government, this was high treason, one of the worst crimes to commit back then. Uh, Louis Riel was sent to trial and his lawyers wanted to frame him as insane. This would end up in him getting a lesser sentence than what he was about to receive. Unfortunately for him, Dr. F.X. Vallad from this home here believed he could distinguish right from wrong and that eventually led to the hanging of Louis Riel for his crimes. Francois Vallad, however, came back here and continued to run his medical office and today it is now in private ownership as a home once again. If anyone has already noticed, it might smell a little bit different where we're standing compared to the rest of downtown. And before we had cars, before we had buses, before we had our sometimes wonderful uh, O-Train system, how did we get around? Horses. Horses. Horse and carriages. So a man named William Cundell opened some stables over on George Street in the 1800s and instantly became very important to the fold of this city. He had the contract for garbage collection with his horses. He provided the horses for the fire department and their wagons. He even did the snow plowing in the winter. Of course, he also sold horses to the everyday Joe because that was your car. Everyone needed one. <laughs> this, uh, he passed it down to his son, Fred, who then passed it down to his grandson, John. 
Don is the third generation of Kundals, still managing the stables just behind me here. These are the only stables still within the city limits, as there is now a bylaw preventing you from opening one unless you're They're zoned. Us to come down. Yeah, unless you're zoned on um, agricultural land. So um, when they wrote that bylaw, they actually wrote in a specific exception for the Kundal stables, as they have been grandfathered in for being a historic business in the area. Today they have four miniature horses, you can see them at birthday parties and petting zoos, as well as two full-size horses that draw the wagon around for trips through the Byward and the Parliamentary Precinct. They are open for it, you can check the number and call and get your own personal wagon ride someday. And there are condos on that one? That's interesting. Yeah. I believe it's still a home. <laughs> yes. Alright, off to the next. Back in. And we get a special trip inside of the stables Whoa. here, guys. Thank you. Here we've been in business now. We're the fourth generation. And uh, we used to have a sell the horses on the market. We had a big stable, held 40 horses. And uh, we used to sell to the bush, to bread companies, to milk companies. And we had the garbage contract in the city of Ottawa drawn by horses. And we had the snow removal with horses. People don't think of that, but in the 40s and 30s and 20s, it was all done by horses. I went with my dad and we went to Manor Park and we put two scrapers on the wagon. I was only a kid then, but he scraped foundations. He started on one side, take the dirt out, come back to the other side until he went down. If you go down to Manor Park, you see the foundations uh, is that high because they hit rock with the horses and it. There were no explosions in there. Right. Okay. So they cleaned right to as far as you could go. Some places it was low and some places it was high. And we used to, my dad used to bring horses for the bread company, the milk companies. And we used to supply our horses at CIP, Singer's Sewing Machine up in the bush. Where they took the wood out to make the cabinets for the sewing machines. And uh, we used to sell 300 horses a year up there. It was a big market. Well, everybody had, the farmers all, all had three or four teams instead of tractors. And, there were no tractors in the business. They tell you a story. There was one alderman wanted to get rid of the horses, picking up the garbage. The city wasn't as big as it is now, you know. So they they quit the garbage. My dad fought for to keep the horses on the street, keep the stable. And they every time they got stuck in the snow with the garbage trucks, they called my dad with the horses to pull them out. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that way. And. Uh, we still do wagon rides and sleigh rides. We don't sell as many horses now as before because they're too expensive. Eh? And if you bought a horse at a sale, with all the technology we have now, before I get home with them, they know how much I paid for them. Okay. You know, so so the yeah, technology is good, technology is no good sometimes, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Come and look. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> listen. Uh, you didn't even listen to that me. joke, sir. <laughs> yeah. So they're doing Kalesh rides in the Well, these summer? guys are doing, the, yes, and, and the winter. And, and the how winter. old is this? Th those are eight years old. Oh, eight years old. Yes, both okay. of them, yes. What they're, kind of horses are they? Uh, Belgian. Belgian. So they're a Belgian workhorse. So you can have a Percheron, like that picture up there, that's the black one, and, and they, that's also a big workhorse. Right? Okay. And you can have a Clyde. Okay. Those are all your workhorses. Oh, oh. They're very yeah. impressive looking. Yeah, they are, yes. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want them to step on your toes. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be quick. So do you walk them every day? Uh, not every day. Okay. Uh, we're actually doing it today. But okay. Like every second day, third day, if we don't have a ride, that they go out for just an exercise. Yeah. 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 Big Jake, he goes up and down the lane way lots. Yeah. The man that helps us here, he walks him up and down. Thank you. Well, we w ride Jake. Okay. We, we've never ridden these two because but Jake, we, he's been here a long. He was only three when he came here, so he's been here a long time. So oh, we do hard ride. To get on. Yes. Well, we get on that ladder there, and we get on from the ladder. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen that. Uh, yes. They yes. So well, some depends, right? This guy has a little more silly than the rest. Like it's not really a temper. It's more like he sees something and it makes him jump. Or, and you know, a big truck can go by him and he's not afraid. But a scraper, somebody scraping snow, that scares him. I've seen the horses around Yeah. So you just you gotta watch. Right? Well, th that's all. They just they, they just go out and, and yeah. pull horses. So you have all the horses. Well, they they give rides. 
Yeah. Just right. for a ride? Oh, yes. Oh. Yes, but for wagon rides. Around the market, uh, we'll go up into Rockcliffe, uh, we go into New Edinburgh, like anywhere that the horse can go. Someone says, I need a horse for the like, for, well, And then they rent and they Yes, so they, they book us to do the work. So say they live in Rockcliffe or they live in New Edinburgh and they're having like a birthday party or a Christmas party, we, we go to their house and we drive them around in their house. But you say Ottawa. Or you come here and we give you a ride around the market and past the Parliament or down Sussex and back on the Minto Bridges. That's, really? That's kind of our tour. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So uh, we are maybe one day we can see someone is riding there. Uh, yeah, yeah, you'll the see them walking around. Yeah. Ah. This afternoon, if you're still out this afternoon, my daughter's coming and she's going to take them out for just exercise. Mm -hmm. Exercise. Oh. Is there any limitations where they're allowed to go on the streets? Well, no. Uh, really? They, can really? they well could go, go uh, anywhere in theory. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Like not on the sidewalks, and like no. they cross the sidewalks, but you wouldn't. But you they can go still, on the streets. You in front can of still take them up the sidewalks. And they go past the parliament. Okay. Now the parliament's changed a little bit because they put it one lane, and the other lane right. is, is buses and bikes or something. Right. So it's a little harder now because you don't want to cause the traffic. Trudeau, Trudeau's father. Trudeau's father drove the horses oh. on parliament. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we went and, and he got on the wagon because he wanted to have just a little tour around and he wanted to know if he could drive. So Johnny oh, yes. let him drive. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dad. yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. He was up for everything, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I fun. guess they have the RCMP horses up there sometimes on the hill. Yes. So yes. I don't know if they ever interact. I don't know. Always if had Belgians. Oh, okay, they are Belgians. Yeah. And they're all males. These are all males. The girls are all the, the, the little ones are girls. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they we show them at the fairs. The little ones. Okay. And you'll keep keep them as well as they grow up. That's it. That's they're grown up. They're grown up. Yeah. Oh, that's full size. Yes. Okay. So they're the ones that are the right, miniature. The miniature oh, horse. Yes. Okay. Yes, and so that thing. Thing. This is actually the one in the back is the mother of that one. Wow. Yeah. Then okay. how old are they? Cool. Uh, she's like about 15 there now, and 14 and about 12 now. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's yeah. great. Though. Thanks very much. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Yes. Very you. interesting. Just from these maps. So if you look at those, you can see when Kundal was here and it was just backyard surrounding it and kind of rural land. And now, called dominiums and yeah. other buildings. This is the second last stop, so I've been playing a little game so far. What building do you guys think I'm about to talk about? Starbucks. Starbucks. Yes, it is the Starbucks. <laughs> First group to get it right like that. So long before the invention of the Chicago Roast Coffees and before coffee was even the most commonly drank beverage, this was opened in 1844 as the Shouldis Hotel. This acted just like our Grand Hotel early on the tour, important hotel for people wanting to be in the middle of the action. But it also served as a short-term safe haven for some men. Back in 1849, there was something called the Stony Monday Riots in Ottawa. This was after the uh, Canadian government put forth a bill to compensate those who lost property in the Lower Canada rebellions. Many people saw this as wrong and that the government was giving money to people who had committed treason. So they started protesting and rioting. Eventually, these protests evolved to uh, include firearms and other strong weapons, and many men chose to hide inside of the Shoulders Hotel and Bar right behind me here. Today, it's a coffee house, but if you were here through the 90s and 80s, it was once the Stony Monday Bar in honor of that event. Um, <laughs> all right, we got one more left, guys. Nice. We'll do the game again. What building is the topic tonight? To this afternoon. Whoa. The, nope. the Laugh. The Ding, ding, ding. You are our winner. Oh. The Chateau Lafayette is the oldest tavern in the history of Ottawa. It opened as the Grand Hotel in 1849, making this year 175 for this place being a bar. They keep the tradition alive with live music and free entry every single day, as has been done for the past almost 200. Today it's known as The Laugh, and the same family has owned and managed it since the 1960s. Wonderful music, definitely recommend if you're in for a bite after this trip. Thank you guys so much for coming on my tour today. Our building is amazing. Thank you so much. Our building is open for the rest of the afternoon. Our information desk has some more questions and answers on the actual building history itself. Um, and if you guys are interested again, it's the same stuff. We'll be out running these until 3 p.m. today.